Well, hello there. In this episode, I will share a little bit more about my experience with travel in a pandemic. What is required when traveling from the United States to Curacao? At first, I was a little bit confused. I'd asked around to people who had recently traveled from the States to Curacao, and the common consensus was that the PCR was definitely required. But a little deeper online research showed that the antigen test was also sufficient. Finally, I decided to check with the airline agent. And indeed, in order to travel to Curacao, you could either do the PCR no longer than 48 hours ahead of your flight, or the antigen test no longer than 24 hours ahead of your flight. Of course, these requirements change all the time, and this is only valid at the time that I'm recording this. But in the United States, the testing centers offer both the antigen and PCR test for free. In Curacao, the PCR is quite a bit more expensive, so that could weigh into your decision if you have the option to choose between the two. I signed up for an appointment ahead of time online via the Miami-Dade website. When I arrived at the testing facility, which was located in a parking garage, because I had registered online, I could just walk right in without having to wait around. The whole process was very straightforward and took just under two minutes. So it was pretty much a pain-free experience. And I even got same-day results. I was also very grateful that in the United States, the testing swab is taken just from the nostril area, whereas in Curacao, the swabs are really long and reach all the way up into the upper respiratory tract which I had heard a couple of horror stories about. So when I got tested in Curacao, I was really nervous. So if you're nervous about that too, rest assured these nostril swabs are a sneeze. So what about Miami itself? Miami is a little bit too crowded for me personally because I am an introvert and a highly sensitive person. So I get overstimulated very easily. So I had to make sure to find some quiet places in between our visits to the city. And near our apartment, there's this really quirky wingtip park. On Wednesday nights, they have a truckipang party over here, which is a food truck party. But if you come during the day, all you will find is people trailering their boats into the water for a nice day at sea. So it's a really nice and quiet area surrounded by water. After having lived through two extreme lockdowns and almost two years of complete isolated living, it's kind of overwhelming to suddenly see actual people around you again. But in a way, something good came out of this because I feel a little bit more at ease now being around people. I had maybe become a little bit too secluded and paranoid about the whole situation. Now I feel like I can relax just a little bit. During my trip, I fell in love with the toasted white mocha latte from the franchise Starbucks. Yes, admittedly, I have a coffee addiction, one of these a day kept me going through the frazzle. So that's it for my travel in pandemic series, for now at least. Because after this trip, I'm definitely inspired to go travel again. The fear has been lifted off. I now know that it is possible to take precautions and do it safely and survive the nasal swabs. So maybe it's time to conquer the world again. I've never been a frequent traveler, but I do really enjoy exploring new countries and there's still so much to see in the world thank you so much for watching if you like this video click like and if you want to see more subscribe peace out